Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is for you. It is now, is it May 3rd already? Goodness, it just seemed like we turned the month, didn't it? And we're already three days into it. Jeez, time is flying by. Anyway, it's 6 a.m. in Jerusalem, and whatever it is in your region, we welcome, welcome you for this watch. And um, we are so um, privileged and honored to have the First Nations stepping forward into their special watch tonight. And so I'm going to hand it right on over to Mary Faust, who leads the Native American watch here in the United States and is a um, well-known leader in, amongst the Native American population here in America. So Mary, welcome. Look forward to hearing what you have to say to us tonight. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me just, first of all, start off this evening by, by um, saying this month came, came up so quickly. <laughs> And um, I did not prepare. Typically, I will send out an email to everyone that's on the Indigenous Watch um, already, uh, last week already. And I did not do that this month. Um, came upon very quickly. So I just want to apologize to those that typically join us as Indigenous people on this watch that I did not um, send my preliminary email to let you know what our theme will be tonight and the things that we will be talking about on this watch and also the things that we will be praying into on this watch. So um, my apologies, but as, as, as usual, we are here as um, to take our places on the wall as it were for the, as indigenous people, but also for indigenous communities worldwide, but also um, to give our voice and our contribution as indigenous people, as we pray for the many things that we are seeing and that we are encountering across the globe today. So to start, let me, um, let me just invite, um, that let's, just, let's just go into prayer. And then we can go into a time of worship. I'm going to ask um, Mary Karaka to open us up in prayer. Mary Karaka is from the Maori people in New Zealand, Eotaroa. Go ahead. Kia ora. E mihi anan ki a koe e ihua. Father, we thank you. Tau mai tō wairua ki rungi a tātou tine wā. Father, let the presence of your spirit join us and knit us together. Lord, that our, our thoughts would be one in you and our hearts would be purposed in you. We thank you for the fullness of joy of your Holy Spirit. And we ask on um, this forum, Lord, that you would lead us and guide us in all truth for the betterment of our nations and our people groups throughout the world. In your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I um, we're gonna I'm gonna share with you a song from one of our people on Turtle Island. Worship, worship. We'll go into a time of worship. You are the only worthy one, Yeshua, the Lamb that was slain for the foundations of the earth, for the tribes of every language, every tongue and every nation to come before him and to receive him and to hear of him. I just want to quickly read to you an excerpt from Catherine Dunstan's book. And I want to hear this. I want you to hear this in the context of what we want to pray into tonight. This is an encounter that this First Nations woman from Australia had with the Lord. And she says this, I could see what looked like glory, like a glory mist rising up from the land all across the nation. I was in awe. 
I could sense the intense love of Father God beaming into Australia. As my eyes zoomed in closer to the land in the midst of the glory, I could see people dancing and I heard a glorious sound. It was the First Nations people of the land dancing in a cultural way, dust of the land spraying up as their feet hit the ground. The Lord's glory was released into the land as they stomped in the dance. The land around their feet became filled with the glory. The more they danced, the more the glory increased and filled the atmosphere. And there's scripture from Habakkuk, verse 2, that says this. <clears throat> The peop then people everywhere, everywhere will know about the glory of the Lord. This news will spread just as water spreads out into the sea. As I read this portion of her book and the prophetic unction of how the Father has created all of us, there within all of humankind, there is the prophetic notes in, this, in the chords of the Father's heart within every tribe, every language, and every tongue. And I was, I was reading this, and I was hearing this by the Spirit. I know that this is, this is the crux and the premise of this call, the, the Indigenous watch across the nations, because we are calling our people into a place of hearing and into a place of seeing what the Father had in mind for all mankind when he created all of us. I was in Washington, DC. Now, those of you from across the nations, Washington, DC is the govern government's center, I want to say, is the government gate of the United States of America. And I was there on 414 with a team of intercessors and prophetic types that are, um, for, if we, um, if Habakkuk 2 verse 14, and you can read that in various, um, various translations to get the concept of what we're talking about. And, and so as I was there, we had opened the, the 12 hours of worship and prayer on 414, which was the time of convergence. And so um, just, just last, last month. And so as I was there, it was also from the context of Esther 414. We've just come through Purim. Those of us in the last few weeks, we had done this for 40, for, um, 40, 40 days. <clears throat> and, and we understand we're very well versed with the story of Purim where Esther and her people and, and 414 specifically talks about Esther coming to a place where Mordecai says to her, that you know you have not come into the kingdom for such a time as this. If you do not speak, there will be another deliverance that rises from elsewhere for our people. And so um, Esther becomes um, comes to this place where she must answer the call. So there we were on 414, and we had just opened the heavens in prayer and worship. And I began to see in the spirit, as it were, um, um, what, what I call eruptions on the landscape. There was these eruptions happening across the landscape. And as I was watching, I wasn't sure exactly what I was, what, what I was looking at, but I, I was seeing it in the spirit as we were worshiping and praying. And the young man leading worship begins to sing. And as a prophetic declaration, he begins to sing, there's a rumble in the land. And those of you that are on this watch have heard me say many times that the rumble that is being heard across 
the nations are is is the rumble of people the awakening sound the awakening of a people coming into a place of of not just not just waking up for the purpose of being having been asleep but awakening to the reality of the heart of the father which is his purpose his eternal purpose for every tribe language and tongue and all eyes are looking east which is the center of the universe and the first of the first arising in their destiny the first of the first awakening to what the rest of us as the gentile people i believe carry the call and the mandate to see our Jewish brothers, the elder brothers, come to their role, their proper role, as to lead out in the end time harvest. And so, as I was seeing this in the spirit, and this young man begins to sing, there's a rumble in the land. I very quickly began to hear by the spirit, the spirit said, the rumble in the land is the land yielding to the prayers of the saints, the sons of glory. And we can read that in Psalm 85. If you go to Psalm 85, um, it talks about um, the land, <clears throat> mercy and loving kindness and truth meeting together. You know where that's at in verse 10 of Psalm 85. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Now listen, verse 11. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Verse 12. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. So the, the eruptions that I was seeing in the spirit and the sound that I was hearing, this young man begins to sing about the rumble in the land. It was the sound of the land yielding. We know in Romans, it talks about the land groans to see the sons of God made manifest on the earth. And I believe the Lord, the, the land longs to hear the sound of the ancient ones, the firsts awakening and arising and taking their place across the face of the earth as they connect with heaven to earth with their sound and their dance and seeing the culmination of heaven and earth happening in every indigenous territory on the face of the earth so powerful is this word picture to me as we stand on our watch posts praying for our people groups praying for indigenous peoples worldwide praying for our peoples the tribes in which we were born into many of us have been born into tribes and actually those of you that have been on this watch have heard Dr. Big Pond sharing, and he says, everyone's from a tribe. You're from a tribe somewhere. <laughs> in, the ancient, in the ancients of the earth, you belong to a tribe, whether you associate with a tribe or not. We all come from somewhere. Just recently, I was in the hearing this um, of, of sharing amongst like-minded people in the spirit and also as friends. A gentleman said this, a friend and a believer in Yeshua. He said this as a blessing. He said, indigenous means that we are native to a place, right? And thereby we are the first to that place. In other words, like the firstborn to that place. So whichever lands we hail from, whichever lands we were born, we're indigenous to that land. 
And he said, but really, when we think about things from an eternal perspective and from the dimension beyond our understanding many times, the indigenous, we really are indigenous to the ways of God, the ways of the Father, because those ways, his ways, were found in the garden. And when I think back, when, the, when man was created in the garden, are we not all indigenous to that place, to the formative place of every tribe, every language, and every tongue? And whenever we find ourselves in a place where we begin to rumble with the sound of heaven on the earth, there is a rumble in the land, and it is the sound of the land yielding to the prayers and the worship of, of the sons of righteousness on the earth, the sons of the Most High, the indigenous sons, yes, but indigenous to the heart of the Father, right? Isn't that so cool? And so... <clears throat> Another thing that I heard during Passover, and I believe I heard it in Passover because I needed to hear it in the context of Passover, that we, many times we talk about um, the threshold. We talk about entering from one time space into another or from one place into another. But really, the, he, he said to me, he said, <clears throat> those threshold moments that we are in, that we are passing over. And, and the, thresh, the, the, the definition of threshold many times, yes, it is the entry point from one room to another maybe, as we come through doors, I mean, think of the Dalit um, in the Hebrew alphabet. But really also the threshold is a measurement. It's a measurement that to measure pain. Many times we will use the threshold of pain when we are encountering um, pain, right? Or think about a birthing process. You know, what is the threshold? And a lot of times it, we might think of it as a tolerance. What is your pain tolerance? What level is your pain tolerance? And as we were, again, during that time, as we, we've been praying through many things and the nations of the earth are, many of us are going through much um, that we have to pass over, pass through, right? The, the persevering and uh, passing through many tight places and, and the natural, really as we are transitioning and moving through this journey that we call life. And as we have stood, many of us as intercessors, as watchmen and as prophetic seers, there are things that we have had to tolerate and persevere through. And I really felt as a people, it is time to not just tolerate the things that we are witnessing on the face of the earth. But this is a time in a, in a space where we must come through a time of persevering. So difference, there's a fine line between tolerating pain and persevering pain. The persevering brings us through the na narrow places of life that brings us into the new birthing us into a new place. And, and during the Passover, as I heard this, I heard this in the context of the, the Passover where we also, in the way forward is through the power of prayer and forgiveness. To persevere through those narrow, narrow places, we pass through forgiveness, in prayer. You've heard um, the, and we, we must stand 
we must stand in the place of yes, as one, one, one body, one blood, one common origin, indigenous to the heart of our father, walking in the new covenant and not just knowing about the covenant as it were, but really walking as a dem in a demonstrate, dem demonstrative way. Let me just say this, as the indigenous people have awakened in the place of their place, their role, and as many of us as indigenous people have awakened that we understand the role that Israel must play. Israel is our elder brother. Understanding the role that the, the father has given to us in his new covenant through the blood of the son. Everything must come through that premise of the blood of the son, Yeshua. Not only as a declaration, we declare these things, but really to walk in a place of demonstration as one. And it begins with the intercessors. I believe, personally, I believe that the, demo, that the intercessors and watchmen hold the key. Hold the key. They're the ones that pull into the earth what the Father would have us to walk in as a people. Not just indigenous, but as the body of Yeshua. And what we do in our demonstration as one, the government then begins to shift. The government meaning the political spheres of influence in our midst. And even more importantly, this must happen as individuals. And as we do this, we begin to shift as the body of Yeshua and our nations follow. And so as I say this, you've also heard me talk about and those that I've invited on this watch in the North, um, in the Native America, we've talked about the wampum belt that, that teaches us. The wampum belt tells a story of the covenants and of our, of our life and our journey on the earth. Those that carry the knowledge of the belt that tells a story, it has a, the Mohawk people, and my, many of you have heard of Papa Willie Jock when he was alive on this, on this side of heaven, when he was still with us. He talked about the two row wampum belt. It was called the Gaswenta in his language. And it's the understanding that we are journeying together on this journey. It's like two rivers running alongside of one another. And there was a prophetic word that came forth from Chief Kenny Blacksmith, who was with us a few months ago. And he had this, this um, prophetic word to the Mohawk people who hold the teaching of the wampum belt. He said, the Lord said the time of the canoes flowing down the river separately is coming to an end. We need to come alongside the greater native community might we say the greater indigenous community. We're entering into a season where the wampum belt is no longer going to be on a separate stream. So the wampum belt carriers, if I had a picture of it, it's a belt that has two stripes and each one depicts a story. It's a prophetic story given to the Iroquois people that there would be, that we would be journeying alongside two people groups. And so that there would be a great law of peace that would be at work. I'm really bringing this in a very short message, but it's a huge message. It's a, it's a beautiful message. And so Chief Kenny said this to the Mohawk Nation. He said, we're coming to a time where those two separate streams are gonna come together. And we will begin to understand very clearly where we are no longer separate in our identity. We're talking about the ethnos. The ethnos according to the heart of the father. 
And he said, we have been called to be the daughters and the sons of the great most high. This is so huge. This is a spirit of unity that would cover our people. A spirit of unity, might we say, that would cover the indigenous people worldwide. And I believe the rumble that we are hearing in the land is, in fact, about this. The indigenous people hearing the sound of oneness and responding to the heart of the Father across um, boundary lines, across um, territories, and even indigenous lands, and what we say, the continents. And we are hearing things by the Spirit. And we are responding as indigenous people. And yes, I want to say the people of the Most High. The, the people indigenous to the ways of God all the way back to the garden, which includes all of us. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And so, so I believe we must come into that place of arising as one. And so as I read these words again from Chief Kenny, and I remembered the teachings of the two rivers becoming one. And in the teaching of Papa Willie Jock, he had his belt as a demonstration where the two streams became converged into one and it became a stream where the cross became the leading point. The cross was the convergence where the cross, the image, the Christ being the, the one and we are being the image bearers of the one that led the way that we come as one. And so as I was hearing this and the awakening that we are hearing across the lands as indigenous people, that this is, this is our longing. This is the longing of our heart. And this is the heart cry of this watch to see indigenous peoples worldwide, not awakening just to awaken to revival and then what, but to see the fulfillment to the end, to be the ones that persevere through those tight places as we have, many of us had ventured through many tight spaces on the earth. And especially I think the last two years have been, have been very much a, trial time for us, right? How will we fare during the tight, tight places we've been in? And I just love what Mary Caraca and those from Eitreo have said about our culture informing our faith. I believe it was um, Bubby Murray that said this one of the first few times we gathered on these watches. She mentioned it, and again, um, Mary Caraca mentioned this last month, that our culture informs our faith, faith in the Son, faith in the Godhead. And so I want us to pray together as we come into this place, that we would pray from that oneness to see as we have seen the awakening sound, the, the rumble in the land is the land yielding to the prayers of the saints because it has to, it's longing for the sound of every tribe, language and tongue to bear witness with what is already completed in heaven and with what already is agreed upon in heaven. And so we want to pray into that this evening. I invite you to pray into that with us. Um, I see a few of our, our indigenous people here. We have um, um, Mary from New Zealand, Jan Stephenson, um, and many others, Susan Carter, um, Holly Kingsbury, Fran, Francine, go ahead. Some, go ahead, just open the mics and we're gonna pray into this. We've not really 
um, done anything formally this evening. Father, we thank you. We thank you that the whenua of the land responds to you. We thank you that the presence of who you are and your people on the land, Father, that uh, the land responds to the sound of your saints. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what you're doing in the nations. We thank you, uh, Father, for what you're doing amongst us all here as a people. And we ask, Father, that the stir of your spirit be in us. Father, that um, your presence meets obedience and the words that you've put in our mouths to pray, that your presence, Father, would meet, um, your presence would meet us. Lord, we give you glory and praise and we ask, Lord God, that you would lead us and unite us as one, Lord. Father, thank you that you're omnipresent, that you speak to all and can speak to all of us in one moment of the same thing. Father, we are in the days of you wanting to speak to us, so we say, yes, Lord, speak to us, Holy Father, that we would utter and pray the utterance of prayer and unity across the world, Lord, that would cause the rumbling of the whenua, Lord, that your spirit would respond and that the land would respond to your spirit in this time, in Jesus' holy name. I thank you, Father, that as an indigenous group, Father, our forefathers laid a foundation in our land and Father dedicated it to you. And I thank you and I praise you, Father, for that you have given us the authority, Father, God, to pray for our land and against those things that come and try and divide and separate us as your people. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit moving through the nation of New Zealand and the nations of this world, Father God, because your will will be done. Regardless of the circumstances, Lord, cause your people to stand and know their purpose for why they have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. In Jesus' powerful name, I thank you and praise you. Praise God. Amen. Holly, oh, your 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 um your volume was not on. Holly, we couldn't hardly hear you. Can you hear me now? Now I can, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Father, we thank you, God, that you are moving across the land. Father, that you are, are releasing the sound of the, the indigenous peoples across the land, not just across Turtle Island, God, but across the globe. Father, I thank you that you are raising a voice, Father God, and they're releasing the sound as the land responds, God, to the original peoples of the lands. Father, I thank you for this great awakening, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are sweeping across the globe, Father, your spirit, Father, will cover the earth, Lord. Father, I just thank you that, that we are living in the day and the hour of this rumbling, of this groaning, Father God, that the earth has been longing for, the earth has been anticipating for, Lord, for the peoples of the lands, of the lands across the globe to, to come forth to come forth. We just call that forth right now. Come forth. Release that sound. Release that sound that that is um, will echo through all of the indigenous places, Father God of this of this uh, lands of the globe, Father. And I just thank you, Father God, for your promises and your faithfulness for each and every people group represented here in Jesus name. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for the sound that you put that in each and every person because you have created us and it's the sound of um, come home, come back into the garden, um, come, come back into your purpose. And when I heard this worship, it was so deep that, um, that it always touches my heart really, really deep in a deep place, deep calls to deep. And, um, and Father, for your word, what you spoke in this, um, in, into this worship, it was Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst of the righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I, I heard such, an, um, in, in, um, such a, a voice saying, come on, get the land, stand on the land. I have given it to you. Father, and I thank you that, that we are all standing together as one, 
on the land with Israel and in all the tribes and tongues and saying, this is the land the Father has given it, that we possess this land as one, as given from your hand. Thank you, Lord, that you bless this unity, this oneness, and that really the indigenous people, they have a forerun, Father, that we are all seeing that and feeling that and becoming one in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Um, Father, we are so excited we receive this word a word of exhortation, but also a word of direction. Uh, even from Africa here, we receive this word that um, our cultures across the world are informing our faith in Yeshua. We receive this word of convergence that it will Henceforth, our faith, Lord our God. Thank you for this rumbling which is going across the nations of the world as we continue to yield to Yeshua. Thank you, Lord our God, that all the things, the idolatry, the belief systems which we are not yielding to Yeshua are beginning now to understand that Yeshua is the convergence that we shall all at the end of the day, come to know the living faith of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you for this reminder this morning here in Africa. We bless your holy name for such a word and for raising us for such a time as this to hear this so that as intercessors, we can begin to work the governance of this word in our land. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name we have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen. Go ahead, somebody else. Go ahead. I just I want to read a word that came this morning um, from a sister in New South Wales in Australia, uh, First Nation. Um, I just want to read a bit of what she said. Um, in these times, I believe the Lord is increasing and releasing his voice with great authority through his First Nation people groups of the land. He is raising up his sold out, set apart indigenous burning ones and releasing his voice to set nations ablaze for Yeshua. The Lord took her into a, a, a vision. She was looking down uh, over the nation of Australia by the spirit of God. Um, she knew in her spirit that this was for Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific Islands and other indigenous peoples uh, in the land, in lands, his glory released in the land as they stomped in this in the dance. She could see glory mist rising up from the land across the nations, as spiritual eyes zoomed in closer to the land. In the midst of the glory, she could see people dancing and heard glorious sound. It was the First Nations indigenous people of the lands worshipping and dancing cultural way, dusk of the land spraying up as their feet hit the ground. The glory of the Lord was released into the lands as they stomped in the dance. The glory spread and filled the land of the nation. See Habakkuk 2.14. The First Nations people carry a glory that is unique to lands. This glory is about to be released into the nations and I believe it's a powerful ancient key to unlock the awakening of the nations, the rhythm of an ancient love. And Father, I just want to pray um, that, uh, Lord, there is a sense of, of the, the stomping of our feet um, in worship, in, that the ground uh, will hear the worship of the First Nation peoples, Father, as we, as we walk in you and as we listen to you. And, and I Father, I just pray for the sounds that would come from, from the ancient sounds, Father, from the songs, the, the music, Father, the language, um, the dance, Father. Lord, that the stories, uh, Father, that you've given us, um, Father, from, from the garden, from those ancient times, Father, that our, that our ancestors carried and, and, and in some nations, um, we're stopped from being able to pass on. But, Father, I believe that you're going to restore, Father, that, Lord, we will pick up, 
Father, those mantles and, and will pick up, Father, the, that, that dance and that language, Father. And, Father, you'll restore it for this time, Father. For this time, you're calling for your First Nation people or peoples around the earth, Father, to, to arise and shine and, and to stand in your glory and to uh, release release over the nations these sounds and these words and 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 father i just i pray for our men too lord that you would just begin to raise them up and father take them to their rightful place lord uh, father the women and the children father that we would uh, father begin to release and and to pass it on to our next generations and so father we just we thank you for this time of being able to come together um, from around the, the different parts of the of the earth, Father, and Lord, speak and hear and, and take hold of the word that you're speaking into the First Nation peoples uh, of your creation, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Yeshua. Wow, that's so good. Um, Mary, I see that um, I'd like to say something, but I see Jennifer's had her hand up for a while, and I'm not sure if she'd like to say something first. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, can I <clears throat> want to read from Ezekiel chapter 37? Um, surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations <clears throat> and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. They shall no longer be two nations nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms mm -hmm. again. They shall not defile themselves, nor with any transgressions, but I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, mm -hmm. and I will be their God. And above, Father, mm -hmm. your, your word, which, mm -hmm. which resounds over the ages, and we mm -hmm. just thank you, above, Father Yeshua, we've just come talking about Passover and that at the cross you broke the divisions between us and made us one mm -hmm. and, and in, in your prayer on the last prayer on earth Yeshua you prayed to the Father mm -hmm. that your disciples and those who believe in you will be one even as you are one with the Father and the Father is answering your prayer Yeshua and, and at this latest Passover, we, you brought us to Mount Zion. You brought us to Mount Zion and want to declare that on this mountain, on the mountain of Zion, that we shall be one. We shall be one by your grace, by the power of the love, of your love. We shall be one in this day. In this day, we declare it, God, as we stand upon your word, in Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Jan Stephenson, go ahead. Yeah, I just, I wanted to share, um, we had a holy moment in our Indigenous Forum on Saturday morning. Um, we, we actually accidentally <laughs> uh, played a um, song, and it's a, a song from... Uh, scripture and song and it's a song by Bob Fitt and the words read let all creation and in the heavenlies begin to sing praises to the king for when creation sings the Lord is listening and he mm. ascends his holy throne yeah. And on Saturday morning, it was very early, and we felt like we had joined in what God was doing. We had joined the dawn chorus that is, I, I heard the word from Australia, the ancient rhythms. The dawn chorus always comes in rhythmically, and God always comes in. Um, night following morning and I in our city um, through this um, Passover we have felt like we have joined in 
the rhythms and the work mm -hmm. of God. And we have moved into a, a, a space of victory, won through the cross. And we are sensing that this is what we are um, navigating now, that we must live from the place of victory in this place and space that we are navigating as Indigenous people in our nation and as people of God, all of us. So I just wanted to share that. It was such a holy moment where God, we were, it was like we, we accepted God's invitation to move into his rhythms that have already been established in the earth. And when we groan, we groan. But when we rejoice, we rejoice. But when creation sings, the Lord listens and he ascends his holy throne. Because we know that the word says that he inhabits, he inhabits, that's where he lives, the praises of his people. So I just wanted to share that word with you this morning today. Amen. Amen. That is so good. That's so good. It makes me think of Psalm 84. We're all on a pilgrimage. Yes. yes. And we pass through the many things we pass through, but each of us appearing before God in Zion. Amen. So we declare that over indigenous tribes across the world. There's a hand up. I believe it's Hillary. We are at the top of the hour. So I will let you release your word and then we'll go right into closing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was just thinking about Romans 11 and we were thinking about it in terms of the resurrection on another watch yesterday. And I just want to ask the Lord's forgiveness mm -hmm. from uh, the Jewish indigenous, I guess, first people of God's perspective, Father, where we have been so anti-Christ. And as the Jewish people have been so wounding and poisonous and hurtful to so many Messianic believers and so many Gentile believers in Yeshua. And that, Father, this wall of hostility, as my sister said, has been torn down at the cross through your precious blood and through the pouring of your Holy Spirit, you have brought peace between us. And I want to pray and speak out, proclaim amongst indigenous peoples of all the earth that there will be no more replacement theology. There will be no more anti-Semitism or anti-anything. Lord, may we be one, as has been so beautifully prayed. And may your land respond. And we see in Israel, as your people of Israel have returned to the land, it has blossomed. It has produced it has been fruitful. But Father, you want the fruitfulness in the realm of the Spirit. And I just want to speak out this promise that it is through the Gentiles provoking the Jews to jealousy that many of them will be saved. And I praise you, Lord, that you say um, Rome, through Paul in Romans 11:11, 11, 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not but through their fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? And I want to proclaim that resurrection life of Christ. It says, for if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. And we thank you, Jesus, you are that root. You are the one we all need to be grafted into. And may we put you in the center and first place and give you all the glory altogether because your pattern in heaven is of every tribe, tongue, color, nation, language, worshiping you before your throne. 
And we thank you that this is coming into reality, even now in this season and in our day. And we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. So what a lovely ending to our time together, mm -hmm. even as we circle back to Israel. And I believe the, um, from the onset of this watch for over a year now, I believe the, the, the context of this watch is as indigenous people awakening, we're understanding of our role as we stand with our elder brother, the Israel, our Jewish brothers and sisters. I just wanna read one last thing and then we want to, if, if any of you brought communion, let's just do that at the end if you didn't prepare, don't worry, just join us. But um, in 2016, the First Nations people of Turtle Island released a prayer, power to forgive prayer over the Americas. And um, in 2020, um, Papa Willie Jock wrote a preamble to this because we were revisiting this prayer in 2020. And so it was our fifth time on the, in Washington, D.C. to do this. And one of the things that he said was this, um, just reiterating the power to forgive. But one, the, what I want to read is this, the roots of the doctrine of discovery and manifest destiny have grown deep and strong in America, or might we say across Turtle Island, but not so deep and not so strong as the power of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It is by this power that we have uprooted, thrown down and destroyed this unrighteous tree of bondage, oppression and death. It is by this power that we come against all hatred, all bitterness, rage and unforgiveness there's there's more to the prayer but but that peace there are things that have inserted themselves on our soils right in our lands many things that come our way as indigenous people even as we shared last last month we've been this round many times where the governments of our nations have proved their overreach over our peoples and the devastation that comes as a result. However, there is nothing that can do that, that, that can keep us from, that is nothing more authoritative and more powerful than the power of forgiveness. And mm -hmm. I believe that's why across the continents, we still have the indigenous people and this is why we are hearing again the rumbling across the lands. It's that convergence of heaven and earth, or as Ephesians writes, the culmination of heaven and earth. And this was his kind intent, his the intention of his heart to see the people of the lands, every lands coming into partnership with heaven. So as we go, let's take communion together. And um, I was going to ask my husband to, to lead us in communion, but I'm not sure if he's still on with us. John, are you still on the call? I am here. Go ahead, lead us. To capture the whole program in the earth when Jesus Christ said in my body, I take down every dividing wall and from two, I make one new man and bring peace on earth. Tonight, we receive the broken body of our Lord to this end, that we become one, even as the Father and the Son are one. We take the bread and remember. And that same night that he was betrayed, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood. But I remember, he said, this is the new covenant, the new testament of my blood shed for many for the remission of sins and so for the sins of the people we receive your blood wash us clean for Romans 
Revelations 22, 12 to 14, for he said, those who are washed in the blood, he said, I'm coming quickly to bring my reward to them. My reward is this, that they may have access to the fruits of the tree of life and that the leaf of the tree heals the nations. Father, we take this now, the blood, and we remember the gift, freedom from sin and access to the tree of life. Take the cup. May the leaf heal my nation. Amen. I'm going to ask um, Francine O'Brien to close us out in prayer. Aho, donk e, vega donk e, deg ya deg de da. We're all related. We're all family. I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're saying right now and the things that you're teaching us by the power of your Pegadonki, your Holy Spirit. We ask you to continue to show us what we need to know, how to come together. This is a time of the wampum belt for our people to come together and to come together and the, the canoe riding down the river will be one. Father God, help us. Show us, Doc E. Show us what we need to do and how to do it. We can't do this without your help. We need you. This is desperate times that we're in. And so I believe today that when we call upon you, you're healed from heaven, as your word says in Jeremiah. And show us great and mighty things of which we do not know. We bless bless each one on this call. I thank you. It's an honor to be on this call with this many people from different lands. We are so thankful for, for you, for all that you've done for us. And we say we love you. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Sue Rao, do you have any last words and announcements you want to make no just to to bless you guys and thank you for bringing the rhythm of heaven to the forefront of our hearts today so uh, th that's exactly what uh, we when we launched this a year ago we were entering into a, the morning and the evening expression which is from the very beginnings and uh, we're seeing it be really uh uh, foundation for covenant because every time we land in this room there's a covenant expression between the nations that happens as we seek the lord and take communion together so thank you mary it's a beautiful message thank you everyone blessings and shalom wherever you are if it's morning where you are night wherever you are blessings and we will see you again a month from today. Blessings. God bless. Blessings. God bless. Thank you, Mary. God bless you all. Great to see you all. Blessings. 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 Blessings.